We'll now turn our attention to rites of passage, which are rituals that usher people from one stage of life to the next. The term rite of passage was coined by Arnold van Gennep in his 1909 book, Le Rite de Passage. Around the world, cultures divide up the human life into several stages, and the transition of a person from one stage of life to the next, in almost every case, is marked by a ritual. That makes rites of passage a cultural universal, or something found in every culture. Many life transitions are marked by rites of passage. For example, there are rituals that mark the beginning of life or the beginning of a viable life once the child has survived the first year. Examples are infant baptism, the Hindu Anaprashana ceremony, which marks the first time the child eats food other than milk, the head smek of the Yucatec Maya in which the child's legs are parted and the child rides astride the parent's hip for the first time, or ceremonies of the circumcision of the genitalia. Then there are puberty rituals, some for girls, some for boys, that celebrate the maturation of the child into an adolescent. Sometimes these puberty rituals are marked by circumcision. Around the same age, Many cultures consider it important for children to comprehend the key mysteries of their religious faiths. So puberty is simultaneously marked by religious initiations, such as Catholic confirmation, the Jewish bar or bat mitzvah, Buddhist initiation of boys into a temporary monk status, and as we will read about in this unit, the religious initiation of Hopi children. Then, Signaling the transformation of the adolescent to adulthood are graduation ceremonies and in some cultures a separate ceremony that signals readiness for marriage. Some examples are debutante balls, quinceanera ceremonies marking the girl's 15th birthday in many Latin American and Latino communities, and rituals commonly seen in East African societies, which announce that adolescent boys are becoming junior elders and are ready to establish families of their own, as we will see in this unit. Other rites of passage include weddings, bachelor parties, baby showers, retirement parties, and funerals or mortuary rituals, which we will consider later in this course. Rites of passage are extremely important in all societies. They prepare participants intellectually and emotionally for the roles and responsibilities that will be expected of them in the next stage of life. The preparation is both intellectual, through verbal instructions, and emotional, as the rituals often put people through various challenges that will build up their courage and resolve for the challenges of life that lie ahead. Rites of passage often have strong psychological impacts on the participants, transforming the basic sense of self. Not all rites of passage are the same, but if we hone in on the rites of passage that usher children into adolescence or usher adolescence into adulthood, we find that they often put the participants through some sort of ordeal in which the participant experiences emotional pain, such as fright, disenchantment, shock, or intense discomfort, or physical hardship or pain. Why? This is the real question that we want to address. Why, at these key moments in life, are people commonly put through an ordeal? We want to pay close attention to several such ceremonies to discern similarities and differences and to develop a theoretical model about rites of passage and ordeals. To begin the topic of rites of passage, please read Sam Gill's article, Disenchantment, a Religious Abduction. The Hopi are a native culture of Arizona, and Gill's article describes the initiation ceremonies in which children around ages 8 to 10 are initiated into the Hopi religious life through a ceremony that reveals the mystery of the Kachinas. The Kachinas are spiritual beings in the Hopi religion, This is a representation of a sacred kachina. In his article, Gill identifies disenchantment as a key element in the kachina initiation ceremony. Why is this the case? 
What causes the feelings of disenchantment and why is this part of the ceremony? In other words, why do the Hopi usher their children into the mysteries of their religion with a ceremony that creates this intense negative feeling? As you are reading, please note that as Gill builds his argument, he first explains several other outsiders' interpretations of the rituals. He points out various flaws in those interpretations, and then he offers his own argument, which is based on the words of Hopi initiates themselves. It's important to read all the way to the end of the chapter to capture the whole of Gill's argument. Later, you will read Alan Marinus' article, The Ritual Experience, Pain and the Transformation of Consciousness in Ordeals of Initiation. In this article, Marinus examines boys' initiation rituals cross-culturally, or in different cultures around the world. He notes that these rituals often require the boys to endure some pain as they are being initiated into adolescence, and he offers an explanation as to why this might be. One example he gives is depicted in the 1798 drawing of a boy's initiation ritual in Australia in which an incisor tooth was knocked out. This article is probably the most challenging reading we'll do in this course, but if you take it piece by piece, you can work your way through it. As you're reading, please note that as he builds his own argument, he first explains several other people's arguments, but he points out various flaws in those theories and then he offers his own. Again, it's important to read all the way to the end of the article to capture the whole of Marinus' argument. After you read these two articles, you will be asked to participate in a discussion about why initiation rituals that mark the passage from childhood to adolescence are often characterized by disenchantment and or pain. Then later, after the discussion is over, we'll continue to explore the topic of rites of passage a bit more by watching a film called Maasai Manhood. The Maasai, also spelled with a double A, are a cattle herding society who live in parts of Kenya and Tanzania. Even though you won't be asked to comment on this film in a discussion post, you can draw upon this film for the next paper topic, so be sure to watch it. I'm positive you'll find the film very compelling as people usually find the Maasai to be one of the most fascinating cultures. Please note that the film Maasai Manhood examines a different life stage than the two articles that you will have just read. Gill and Marinus focused on the rituals ushering children into adolescence. In Maasai Manhood, though, the focus is on rituals ushering adolescence into adulthood. The Maasai society is strictly divided into groups of people associated in age, known as age sets. Members of an age set pass together from one life stage, one age grade, to another. Following their circumcision in their late teens, young men pass into the Moran, or warrior, life stage. In this stage, they have to live with other Moran outside of their father's village, either in other villages or in forest encampments. The film describes life for the Moran, and then the film details the Eunoto, which is a ritual that transitions them from Moranhood to junior elder status. As you're watching the film, ask yourself whether the Eunoto rituals entail the disenchantment or pain discussed by Gill and Marinus. If not disenchantment or pain, does the Aonoto involve physical hardship or emotional distress? Please note that I'm asking you to focus on the Aonoto rituals, not the Moran stage, which precedes that. <laughs>